absolutely mashed. This thing's rubbish. I've done this hundreds of times. I just don't think I've ever done it on camera. This actually sucks. The money shot. What's going on guys? I think I've said it a few times, but I bought this car as a lockdown project. I've had it for about eight months now, and I still haven't serviced it. I checked the dipstick the other day, and it had basically no oil in it. I just threw in whatever I had laying around, but it's about time we got rid of that, and put the right oil in this car. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I normally find it quite a faff trying to find the right oil for my car. Normally you go to your little motor factors and they just give you whatever oil they can find off the shelf and it doesn't normally say whether or not it's the right oil for your car. I found this brand online and it actually says on the back that this oil meets the specification that's in the logbook for this car. I've also got a genuine Ford oil filter, a genuine Ford fuel filter and some NGK spark plugs. Because what other spark plugs would you use? We've got an aftermarket air filter on this so we don't need to worry about that. And who's ever changed the pollen filter? Now, I'm not one of those people who thinks you should always use genuine parts when you service your car, but who's ever let their mate go for a rip in their car and they've come back and said, Jesus Christ, mate, you're running a crossing oil filter in 10W40 in this thing. It drives like a piece of s***. Anyway, that being said, I do think you should always use the manufacturer specified oil for your car. So let's get on and service this thing. Once he stops adding tires to the long list of parts that this car needs. And something that I normally forget, but highly recommend changing, is your drain bolt. Because a lot of the times these get absolutely mashed and they're a nightmare to remove. I know the one on this is pretty bad. And if you've seen any of my previous videos, then you'll know just how bad it is. So I've got a set of rounded bolt removers to help me get this thing off. And while I'm under here, if I've got time, I'm also going to replace the water pump because ever since we did the thermostat, I'm noticing a water leak. I've checked all the things around the thermostat and any of the other lines and everything seems fine. The only place I can think it's leaking from is from the water pump. So we're going to change that out and see if that fixes it. Before we crack on with the service, I've just had the car running to warm the oil up slightly so it's a bit thinner for when we drain it. That's our water pump pulley there. And you can just see that like dark patch in the middle. And I believe that is the source of our leak. But the first thing to do is get the oil changed. I've had a look at this bolt. I was just gonna try and get it off with a normal socket to start with, just to see if it would go. But I mean, it is absolutely mashed. It's so, so rusty and so rounded that I'm just gonna go with one of these rounded bolt removers straight away. I've never actually used one of these before. I don't know if you meant to like tap them on with a hammer or something. Yeah, I mean, it's not biting on, so it's biting in. I don't know whether it's actually turning that. No, I think it's just rounding it off even worse than it was. It just kind of spins back off it. This thing's rubbish. It's literally just rounding it off even worse. This actually sucks. I've managed to bash a 12 on there and we've got it moving. Right, let's see if we can get the money shot. I've done this hundreds of times, I just don't think I've ever done it on camera. Oh, we missed the bucket. I think that's about gonna do it. So, I've got a nice new sump plug ready to go in. This one's not mashed to pieces. Next thing to do is the oil filter. Now, the oil filter should only be on hand tight, so because of the state of that bolt, obviously I've got my uh, oil filter pliers just in case. Oh, you know what? It's actually on hand tight. Look at that. I take it back. Maybe you didn't know what you were doing. You just forgot to get a sump plug like I normally do and made the one you had work. Now, you lot can have a pissing contest in the comments if you like as to whether or not you should... Uh, pre-oil your filters or whether or not you should put a little uh, little blob of oil around the uh, the o-ring before you fit the filter back in but you know that's totally up to you with these engines because of the way the oil filter mounts nothing's really going to spill out because it's just a straight shot down from the housing so that's nothing really to worry about now i was thinking about asking my friend ash to come and change this for me because he did such a good job last time but he wasn't available today, so I thought I'd crack on and get this bit done myself. Just thought I'd give you a quick look at the oil. Lovely. Good thing we changed this out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and refill the oil. Now the owner's manual says that excluding the oil filter, this takes 3.9 liters of oil, or including the oil filter, I think it's 4.3. No idea what the markings on the side say. There are markings on it, but it doesn't say what they are. 
Right, we put pretty much bang on 3.9 litres in. I mean, it's literally just starting to show on the dipstick, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Maybe these marks on the bottle are just completely wrong. Maybe I was completely reading them wrong. Ah. Am I only supposed to put 3.9 in? Then once the engine's run and everything's circulated round, what's in the oil filter makes it up. So maybe after I run this, maybe I've put too much in. I'm sure it'll be fine. It'll burn that off anyway. <laughs> Apparently these engines burn oil quite badly. So, well, especially when they get older. So I shouldn't think it'll be too much of a problem if I have done that. It's still not at the maximum anyway, so I think we're gonna be fine. I'm not too worried about that for the time being. Right, next job, spark plugs. Now, if there's one thing that is worrying me about this service it is the spark plugs. Just because this is an older car now and this is on quite high mileage, like this car's on over 100,000 miles. And I mean, the state some of the other parts of this car have been in doesn't exactly give me a lot of confidence that this car was meticulously maintained. Ah, it was actually nice and easy to get off. You know what? They actually don't look too bad. And just what I do like to see, NGK plugs. I'll just tell you quickly why I go with NGK plugs. They actually give you like a diagram of how tight you're meant to do them. There's two types of seat on these where they actually seal to the head. Like this one says one sixteenth of a turn and then this one's a half to two thirds of a turn. Basically what you do is you do it up hand tight so you can't do any more by hand and that's how much you turn it with the ratchet. And also you don't need to use any sort of grease or anti-seize with these because they're made with like a special, I don't know whether it's like a coating or something to do with the metal that they're made of, like the seat on these. But, it, you know, it just won't seize to the head. So that's the main reasons why I go with NGK, and I'd never use anything else in any of my cars. Oh. So that's all those back in. Okay, that's the spark plugs done. Now before I put the engine cover back on, I'm just gonna start the car up and just check it's running okay, check the leaks underneath, just stuff like that. Okay, everything's looking good. The car's not misfiring or anything like that, and there's no leaks, so let's move on and get this water pump changed. Now, I've changed my mind. I'm actually gonna do the fuel filter first because I know what I'm doing with that. So I've got the car running at the minute, and just to make sure there's no like fuel pressure built up in the lines when I remove the filter, I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the fuse for the fuel pump. So it's this one here. It's uh, fuse 15, it's a 20 amp fuse. So if I pull that, then that should cut power to the pump. And now the car's cut off, so Put that fuse to the side. I'm going to try and start the car again. Yeah, there we go. So the car won't start. That's good. So hopefully now we haven't got any uh, any pressure in the fuel lines, and we can go ahead and remove that filter, which is just underneath here. Now it's going to be quite tricky to film, but the fuel filter is just up here. I'm guessing it's just a case of popping the filter. Yeah, it's in like a little bracket. There we go. Right, I've popped it out of its bracket. I've got a bucket under here because some fuel will spill out of here. Like, there's no way of avoiding it. But basically, you've got to squeeze that in. I think it normally helps if you, like, push in, squeeze, and then it should come off. Oh, there we go. You can just see that arrow there. So we want to make sure that our new one goes in the same way with the arrows facing that way. And then, just a case of plugging this one in and then just pop it back up in there and make sure it seats and that's the fuel filter changed it's back in that's all looking good and that's the service done now onto that water pump now before i remove the water pump i need to drain the coolant which you've seen me do before Okay, now the next job, I've been told it's easier to remove the pulley off the back of the water pump before you remove the pump. So this is the pulley here. You can just see three bolts there. So I'm gonna jump underneath and see if I can loosen those off. I've been advised to do it while the belt is still attached because hopefully the belt will stop it slipping, stop the, uh, the pulley turning as I try and undo the bolts. So let's see how we get on with that. Oh, it was spinning, but 
There we go, I've just got that loose. It was spinning a bit. Okay, that one's loose. And that one's loose, there we go. I did have a little metal bar here, which I was just gonna like wedge in between two to brace them while I'm doing the third if, uh, if it came to it, but it doesn't look like I'm gonna have that problem. I'm just gonna go ahead and take the tension off the belt using a long 13 mil spanner. I'll rephrase using a long 15 mil spanner. Fortunately is the other end of this. That should allow me to slip the belt off the pulley, like so. And I'm gonna try and remove the rest of these bolts holding the pulley to the water pump by hand. Might take me a while, because there's not a lot of access here. Actually, <laughs> I wonder. Yes. <laughs> I had my mouth open laughing at how, how I managed to do that and something fell in my mouth, that's gross. Ah, stuff in my eyes. That is definitely where it's been leaking. So I'm trying to figure out how you actually take this thing off. Okay, I've gone ahead and cracked all three bolts to hold the water pump in. So it's this bolt here, there's one up above my finger there. And then there's one, you can just see it up there, just above the pump. They're all eight mil bolts. And to be fair on mine, they weren't that tight. They were quite easy to crack loose with like a quarter inch ratchet. I'm gonna get those bolts out and then see if we can wiggle this pump out. There's one bolt, there's two. Okay, there's number three. Okay, so I've gone ahead and removed the driver's side headlight, which a lot of people on the Facebook pages and people I've messaged about this had told me to do. So shout out to all of you guys that, uh, that told me to do that and I completely ignored it. I'm not sure if this is a very good way to do it because this could like damage the, uh, this could damage part of the engine, but I'm doing it on like this bit here where one of these bolts goes that sort of sat away from where the o-ring that seals this in is so i'm hoping that this will be okay and isn't going to give me any issues okay so we broke the water pump that's in there okay there's a lot more coolant in there than i was uh, expecting to find Well, there it is. I wonder if it's going to be as much of a pain to get the new one in as it was to get this one out. I'm guessing it's going to want to fight me as hard going back in as it did the other one coming out. I guess it's going to be a case of trying to get some bolts in so it'll pull the water pump into place. Right, there we go. That's all the water pump bolts done up nice and tight. Now we just need to get the pulley back on, get the belt back on, fill it up with coolant, and then we're done. Okay, so that's the pulley back on. Now we just need to get the belt back on, and then I can tighten up these bolts once the belt's like keeping this pulley kind of tight. So that's the belt back on. Now I just need to tighten up those bolts that hold the pulley to the water pump. Try to put more tension on the belt using the tensioner pulley. Okay, so now I just need to fill up the cooling system. I've got some antifreeze here. And once again, this meets the Ford specification. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the same spec that is stated in the owner's manual. We're gonna put in two liters to start with, top it up with two liters of water and see where we're at, and then just top off as needed. 
Okay, so I've put in two liters of coolant and one and a half liters of water. I'm expecting that level to go down slightly after we start the engine. So then we'll just add up, you know, as much as we need up to another half a liter of water and then some more antifreeze if we need it, but I don't think we will. Let's get this thing started, check for leaks and bleed the cooling system. Okay, there we go, the car's back together. I've run it up to temperature and everything seems fine. There's no leaks, the car's getting up to temp fine and holding it, it's not overheating. You know, I'm pretty happy with everything there. So yeah, that's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this video. I mean, I'm pretty used to servicing my own cars at this point. That water pump was the only thing that I thought was really gonna trouble me and maybe that sump bolt, but you know, I got the tools to deal with that. And really, it didn't give me that much of a problem. That water pump was a bit of a pain, but it's definitely not the most difficult job I've ever done on this car. So I'm pretty happy with the way everything went today. Anyway, like I said before, that's going to pretty much do it for today. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.